Hi, welcome to my latest video. Well, on this one, I'm going to meet a viewer request. You may have recalled, if you looked at my previous videos on how I set up my wireless access point, I actually transferred some of the UPS power through the wall from behind my rack over to the actual area behind and just underneath, the shelf underneath, where I have my wireless access point stored. As you can see in these pictures here, this is what it looks like at the source, right behind the UPS. We are feeding power into the wall in what's called an inlet. As you can see here, this is one that I just got in order to do this particular video. If I open it up, you will get a couple of things in here. You get the actual inlet socket, and that'll allow you to actually connect up a power cord to something like a UPS or anywhere that's delivering power. So you put the receiver end of it into the outlet here, and then you put the opposite end, which would have your plug on it, and then you could actually transfer power into this inlet. So I'm going to show you how I install this, and we'll do a quick test, and we'll see how it works out. I start this installation with a drywall enclosure that can hold a single gang receptacle for power. Make sure I measure the horizontal and vertical dimensions of it. Then I will transfer those dimensions over to the drywall location where I want to install it using a pencil, giving it a little extra room in both dimensions just to make sure. I do a quick double check with the enclosure and then I start cutting it with a drywall saw. Now I fit the enclosure into the hole that I just cut, make sure it's a nice fit, and then I screw it into place. If I could see inside the wall, I could see the two flanges that have now fanned out as a result of screwing the thing down into place. Okay, now that I have the wire coming through one of the openings in the case, all set, ready to go, I'm going to remove some of the sheathing from it. This is a tool, electrician's use, for that purpose. You could also use a pair of cutters and just cut it back. You don't have to cut off too much for the purpose of installing this connector. Just take it and press it and then pull it. Let me just get this back a little bit. I like to cut off the excess. You have three wires in here, as I've shown in previous videos on electrical installation. One is generally copper coated only. It has paper wrapped around it. I'll cut off the excess of that. Then there's a white, which is called a neutral. And then there's the black, which is the hot. I will go ahead and even them all out pretty much for purposes of the type of thing we're installing here. This box here for the inlet, on the back of it, it has the type that you just push in and tighten with the screwdriver. So let's make sure that the screws are, here's a black screw, guess what that's for? The black wire. Okay, so we make sure that it's opened up a little bit. And then the other side is a silver, that's for the white wire. Sometimes you'll see gold and silver with gold being for the hot. And then there's a green. The green is for the ground. That's the one that has no insulation on it. So we just open them up a little bit. Let's take off a little bit of the sheathing from the black and the white. Here is a wire stripper for purposes of electrical wire. Let's go ahead and pick the right gauge. The right gauge of this happens to be, let's see, probably about right here. We don't have to take off too much. We just sort of spin it in place a little bit and then we pull it out. And that should do it, that should be good enough. So we have the three wires all free at this point. Before we start, take a look inside at each of the holes and make sure that the little clamp is opened enough for the wire that's gonna go in them. This side will be black, white, and green. And then we just put all three of them in, actually, with this type of socket. And they should go all the way down, like this, and then tighten them up. I like to go around a second time to make sure that they're nice and tight. And I do like to take a pair of long nose pliers and make sure that I can't pull them out. That way we know they're in there properly. So at this point, 
I can push the whole thing in, bending the wire as necessary to get it in place. And it comes with the screws to connect that up. So there's four screws in here, two long and two short. The long ones are used to hold these, this bracket in place. Feed that through the opening there so it catches the screw. Get it started. I'll use an electric screwdriver and drive them into place. And that's good enough. We are now installed here and we can put the faceplate on. There we go. We now have an inlet. Now at the other end, I'm going to have to put the actual receptacle. So at this end, I have to put the receptacle, which I currently don't have installed, but I will now install it in that position. Okay. And there we go. I have it fully installed. And now we can see how it works when I test it out. Okay, we're all wired up now. Let me start by putting this lamp over here and plugging it into the outlet that I just added. Right there. And then I have this cord, this extension cord with the proper connector at the back of it, plugged into my UPS. So I'll go ahead and put it on the inlet here and we'll see what happens. And there we go. That lamp is now getting power from my UPS. Okay. I can unplug it and plug whatever I want in there. And then looking at it from the back, I have a single wire connected up between my power inlet and the power outlet that the lamp was connected into. And this is how I have the power from the UPS driving my router downstairs. Until next time.